Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. On today's Fractal Friday, we're looking at my Tools Day rig. So if you've been following me for a minute, you know that on Tuesdays, sometimes I have the chance that I host a whole live stream where all I do is play Tool songs. Everything from Swamp Song all the way up to their latest album. So I got the FM9, uh, what, I guess going on my second week now. Uh, and I haven't been able to play any Tool because I haven't had a rig built and programmed for it. So I figured this week... I would focus on my tool rig and uh, show you guys how I did it. If you're interested in downloading this preset and saving the time, you can either buy the preset directly via my Patreon, or if you join for $5 a month, you get access to all of them. Uh, or you can just follow along and build it yourself. I'm just trying to save you some time for those who are lazy. So uh, really for tool, you don't need a lot for him, at least the way that I replicate him. It's in the hands, but you do need like a, a lower gain amp, uh, a higher gain amp, and like a good clean amp. And then really your effects. You can see the effects here soon. But I'm going to go through, uh, I'm just going to play some of my favorite tool riffs from Tools Day so you can hear the different presets. And then we'll jump into the FM9 edit and I'll show you exactly what I did. Alright, so that's pretty much all the sounds. Uh, let's jump into FM9 edit and we'll talk about them. So I'll update this as I play through it through Tools Day, but this is like me getting something ready for my next Tools Day live stream. So everything is based around two different amps, so I'll go ahead and show you those. My Riffage amp is just the Dizzy, uh, Dizzy V4 Blue 3. This is the actual amp that he uses on stage, which is a diesel V3 blue or something like that. I don't know. I looked it up. Uh, on the Fender Tonemaster Pro, I usually use the 5150, and I just control how hot it is with a tube screamer. You'll see I kind of do the same trick here. But for my riffing, uh, there's nothing too crazy going on. You can see the, the settings here. I start off with a compressor. So first thing here is an optical compressor, just doing some subtle compression. Yeah, so you can see here, the D Dizzy V4, it is amp 117 to save you a little bit of time. <laughs> the cab that I used, I'm using two different rectifier amps. So I'm using a straight with a dynamic and a uh, the slant with a condenser. And I'm, you know, I'm doing my cuts appropriately, nothing too crazy. I could probably even take out more low end. Uh, Cause right now, if you hear this just on its own, it's nice and warm. You know, and that's the thing with Tool is that, like, it's not a screaming distortion like what you would get with, like, Gojira or something. Uh, I find that most of Adam Jones' playing is really light distortion. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that, because uh, you, you, you also have to think about the context of the mix. Uh, so this just blends really well. Now, after the cab section, this is kind of like the special sauce, if you will. I'm just doing some sound sculpting to make sure that what's coming through my cans and also my monitors sounds true to uh, how I believe it sounds. And also to make sure that I'm sitting well within the mix. But again, this sounds super clear. Sweet. For reverb, I'm not really using a, a lot of reverb, uh, and honestly, I could probably go without reverb. I'm just so used to playing with like headphones on, and I just enjoy having just a splash of reverb. And the, the reverb that I really enjoy on this unit is the Recording Studio C. 
All right, so let's jump over and take a look at uh, the clean channel. And all of this is scenes, but when I'm playing so far on this thing, I really jump in between scenes and the effects. And I have my FM9 laid up where my top three buttons are scenes, effects, and presets. Uh, and I don't mind doing the foot stomp thing. So you'll see me if I'm on a clean and I think something's calling for like chorus, I'll just click it on or even a little bit of drive. So just know that, that that's how I design my scenes, but this d scene is really designed that from the get-go, just keep it pretty. One thing Adam Jones does do a lot with his cleans is he will tend to use some delay. So for example, like uh, Invincible. You'll also hear it with um, What is the name of that song? Uh, Vicarious. You'll hear it in Vicarious as well. But uh, a lot of his stuff, to be honest, I just kind of keep clean and I'll let that reverb do a little bit more of the talking. So I increase my reverb time here. Yeah, you can hear it hanging out a lot more. But the amp that I'm using for this is a JC120. Uh, this is like the Roland JC120 amp. That's just amazing. I lower the gain a lot. We're on the bright channel. And I didn't like... Yeah, the bright kind of took a little bit out of the, the lows and the mids. So I just added a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I did a lot of level balancing. So you see this is where I'm at here. If you're on Mac, if you press Command L, it pulls this up. And this is an invaluable tool. Like on all modelers, one thing you, you've really got to be mindful of is like when you're jumping between amps getting the volumes like in one place uh, to stay the same is really a challenge. I wish this is something that the Fender team would adopt uh, because this this just makes rig building for someone like me so easy because I, it's just quick to look. You know, you got amp level and you have preset level. But that's kind of also where Fender shoots itself in the foot. There's like three different ways to control volume, but we won't get into that here. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is staying the same. If we look at my Push It Saliva version, uh, I play this cover a lot on the live stream, so I wanted something to articulate that song really well, and I wanted it to just be really fast to grab. And you can use this on a lot of stuff, not just that song. And that's kind of the beauty of Tool, is like Adam Jones, in my study, doesn't use, doesn't rely on a ton of effects. So it's like once you go through and you play enough Tool, you see he only really uses like five things, if that. Uh, so that was kind of the design concept here was to keep everything simple and just focus on on the playing if that makes sense but he uses this sound a lot but I, I designed this specifically for the slival version of push it but you can hear it, it works for like lateralis too really pretty on the cab section for this i'm using a 1x12 deluxe and i'm just running a condenser mic i actually need to fix this we're going to cut up 100 hertz and then we're going to cut down 5700 and let me save that good catch <laughs> yeah that's it let me actually pull this down to let's go down to 80 yeah and i would say too if i wanted to get a more rounded out i'll just do this live uh let's add in let's do a dynamic let's do dynamic two um i'm gonna move this to about right here same cut You know what? We're going to do so try something just for fun.
Yeah, that's pretty good. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I've done on all presets... Oh, I guess I got one more preset to show you. Searing leads, or soaring leads. The only thing I've done here is I added a tube screamer, um, and I added a delay, so that way you can do stuff like... I don't really know a tool solo off the top of my head to play for you besides... Uh... Oh, the beginning. Uh, if you were playing Tempest... Just crank on the lead or the wah pedal. I've got mine programmed for my Fender Tonemaster Pro pedal. So whenever I click the button, it turns on. But at the beginning is like the perfect for this. So the. You crank it off. Then once Maynard comes in, that's when we dial it back. Honestly, I want to change up. I think I went a little too crazy with this. Yeah, I was thinking of something else when I did this pretty quick. <laughs> but that's dialed in now. Glad I got that fixed. Good catch. All right, well, that's going to conclude today's tool video. Biggest thing to note on here is that the template is done. What you need to do if, if you want to really dial this in is dial everything in to your guitar. You know, this is my Les Paul. This sounds a little warm. You might even want to brighten this up a little bit depending on, you know, there's so many different factors that go into EQ. But nonetheless all the the components are here and they give you a really good template to die from again just remember that tool doesn't really use anything too crazy i mean yeah you know the, some of the stuff that's missing that's like traditionally uh adam jones like the talk box like on john b he uses it but i just replicate that with a wall pedal um and this is the crybaby wall pedal so it's it's very similar it'll get you there but with that, if you have any questions, let me know. On Tuesdays, I tend to do a Tools Day live stream. So if you see me on Tools Day, jump in. Uh, if you see a live stream and you have questions about Tool, again, ask me questions. I love talking about Tool. And um, Adam Jones is basically my guitar dad. Taught me a, a, a lot. Uh, and you, you can hear his influence in my playing and just about everything I've written and just the way that I approach playing in general. So I think with that, that's going to conclude today's video. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.